Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight we begin part one in a three-part field evaluation of the Magic Shine MOH 55 Pro headlamp. Now, I was asked to review this headlamp by several subscribers, so thanks as always for subscribing and submitting your review request. I reached out to Magic Shine. They sent me an eval unit. So I just want to point out, with, uh, without their help, this review would not be possible. Now, I have the light mounted here on my bump helmet. And everyone who submitted requests was interested, of course, in you know how floody is the light, uh, how well does it illuminate a wide area. But the big questions were, if you've looked at the specs, this lighting system advertises a lot of power in terms of lumen output and a lot of runtime. And to get that, you're going to have to do two things pretty well. One, you've got to be very good at heat dissipation. And the manufacturer claims, in fact, that a substantial bulk of the body of the headlamp is dedicated to heat dissipation. The second thing, you're going to need a big battery. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's a big one, that's a heavy one. Just for comparison, here is the battery pack for my current primary, which is the Phoenix HPR30R V2. And there we go, there they are next to each other. So pretty substantial difference in size. This battery pack is proprietary, it's external, and you cannot switch the batteries out inside, un unlike this unit right here. So that's the first thing you're going to have to come to grips with in terms of whether or not this lighting system is for you. Can you deal with a proprietary external battery pack that cannot have the batteries hot swapped in the field? I can't answer that for you, I can only answer it for me, and I'm, I'm always honest in every view, no matter how much help I get from the manufacturer. For search and rescue, wilderness SAR, uh, this is a showstopper. I absolutely must be able to work with standardized batteries in all my lighting systems, and I have to be able to hot swap the batteries in the field. Now that's not to say that I can't use the lighting system. In fact, in the third part of this evaluation, I will show you a couple potential uses in search and rescue. What we're going to do for these first two exercises, which will be held on different nights, is I'm going to show you different ways to carry the battery and mount the light. So the first thing I wanted to test was 100% helmet mounted. Now, you might see that there are some straps right there. These are supplied by Magic Shine. So if you have a helmet that has a couple of holes or slots in the back, you can strap this thing on pretty easily. In terms of the rest of the setup, I use one of my own straps right here to keep this band from sliding up because this bump helmet is really slick. Now the cabling was I don't know, there's, there's only one way to describe it, and that was a bit clumsy. But I was able to get it 100% helmet mounted. So I'm going to take it out into the field now. We'll probably spend 45 minutes to an hour. That's all I've got before the uh, preserve shuts down. And we'll look at all the different modes, and then we'll see how this helmet carry works out. And then in the next exercise, I'll show you a completely different setup. So let's get out there and see what this light can do. So do you see the bobcat? Uh-oh, he heard me and there he goes. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of animal sightings tonight. Uh, that's in medium mode, by the way. Hand it around here. In medium. In fact, I think I'll leave it here in medium. I was in low before that, which actually is not bad if all you're doing is uh, following 
the trail then I picked up that ice shine I thought it was a bobcat but uh, wasn't sure until I bumped the illumination up so I'm gonna leave it here in uh, medium for a while and we'll just go check out some more stuff Well, I thought I would do something a little bit different. I usually show the modes back at the bridge, but uh, you've probably seen this particular point in several of my uh, other videos out of the preserve. I'm in low mode right now, so let me bump this up into medium where I was before. You see, it's a very floody display. However, as I've been walking, I've noticed it has... Uh, a bit more of a, an indication of a spot than I would have expected. So it's not, it's not really a spot. It's, uh, it's very smooth, but it does have more downrange uh, illumination than I would have expected. Let's bump it up one more. That's high. I'm not getting that much more visibility downrange, but I am definitely increasing side to side. So I think the... Uh, the subscribers who were interested in that particular feature may find this test interesting. And then here we go to turbo. And I'm leaving my hands up here on the light right now. I mean, it's warm, getting warmer. But in this first 30 seconds or so, I mean, I've got my finger right on the top of it, and I'm not yet in danger of getting my finger burn. I was expecting this might be something that would, uh, you know, singe my hair off what little is left of it. I've still got my fingers on and it hasn't gotten any hotter. So it's 90 degrees out here right now with humidity. Welcome to Texas. Now it's getting, I would say, uncomfortably warm. I'm going to go ahead and take my, uh, finger off and we'll uh, go back into medium and move on down the road. Yeah, I'd say at this point right now, I'd be forced to take my finger off. So that'll give you some idea. It's definitely cranking out the heat. Don't know if you can see the ice shine out there. I've got the uh, headlamp in high right now. A little bit of zoom on the uh, iPhone, but uh, we got a deer out there. And he seems to uh, be content to just sort of stare at me, so there we go. Going to move on down the road. So I'm really kind of digging this uh, medium mode where I've got the lamp in right now. Uh, 600 lumens. I'm just kind of looking around a fairly open area here. It's perfectly adequate if you have you know, a concrete pathway or, you know, a nice groomed trail like we have here. It's, it's perfect for, uh, you know, moving along that type of path. I've got a bit further visibility down range than I originally expected. I've been able to pick up ice shine while it's well out of way. Now getting detail you're going to have to pump it up into a uh, higher level, but there's a 360 view of a fairly open area in medium mode, and I'm going to move on and see what else we can find out here tonight. Okay, uh, you might see him. There goes a rabbit. I've moved up to high. And this is really the first indication I've really seen of uh, more of a spot type of beam, but it's very, very subtle. I'm still getting, you know, really decent peripheral illumination. And I've got maybe 45 minutes to an hour out here at the preserve since I got started earlier than I anticipated. So I'm just going to walk around and I'm going to leave it in high. The... Uh, rest of the time until we get to the uh, wrap-up point and we'll see if it's still uh, cranking out illumination like this or if there's been some sort of uh, noticeable step down but I'm going to be running on high now
for literally 45 minutes to an hour, just however long it takes for me to get to that uh, point that I plan to do the wrap up and once again in high mode. Well, it wouldn't be Texas without spotting an armadillo, or actually two back there. But I don't have any Lone Star beer, so they're not hanging around. Yeah, you can just see one. There's definitely two in there, might be three. Oh well. Time to move on down the road. So there we just had uh, an owl. He was actually uh, on the ground. When I see them out here, it's very rare. It's usually up in the trees. I've never seen one on the ground before. And there is a better shot. Hey, Mr. Owl. So I typically do wrap-ups uh, at this point in the nature preserve. I'm still on high. I've been here, believe it or not, for just over 44 minutes straight, and this light is still cranking it out. Now, this is a subjective evaluation, but I don't think it's lost hardly anything at all from when I turn, turned it on almost 45 minutes ago. Let me go up to uh, turbo. Okay. That's it, 4,000 lumens peak, only 10,000 peak candela. So although there's a hint of a hot spot, it's still very much a, a, a floody display. I mean, I get peripheral illumination that I cannot even show on uh, this iPhone. Now in terms of weight with this helmet setup, if you're not used to having weight on your head, you are going to notice this, especially if you, you're out more than just 15 or 20 minutes and your head is on a swivel like it should be. I've used a Team Wendy bump helmet in the past. That's a very heavy helmet. So I'm used to having a lot of weight on my head for extended periods of time. And uh, the current helmet I have is ultra light. It's designed to mount a lot of gear on. And the only thing I've got on there right now is uh, this new headlamp and of course the battery. I've got the battery mounted on the back. So battery plus headlamp and a couple of GoPro mounts and that's it. And I felt like I was wearing that Team Windy helmet all night. So take that for, uh, you know, whatever it may mean. In the next exercise, I will show you a different way to carry the battery and a different way to mount the light. Until then, I'll see you probably tomorrow night. All right, we are back for part two of the field testing of the Magic Shine MOH 55 Pro headlamp. Different night, different location, same heat. Well, actually, it's even worse. Right now, it's 94 degrees, and I doubt it will even drop below 90 before I'm through tonight. Now, the first thing you'll notice is no bump helmet. So I said that in uh, each of these evaluations, I'm going to show different wear and mounting options. So first up, of course, is the battery. I did try strapping it on to the belt on my left side. And while that does work, the protrusion was a little bit awkward. And at some point, the wire from that connection has to vector 90 degrees back up towards my head and that puts a little extra pressure on the connection. I don't know if it would be 
uh, a, a real issue at all, but I just didn't like it. So for tonight, I'm actually using a belly band. I'm using one of the uh, larger mag holders in a belly band, and the uh, battery slipped right in. The uh, controls for the battery are perfectly located. It's actually quite comfortable. Um, I, I, I don't even notice that the, uh, the battery is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear this on my head tonight. Now I am wearing a do-rag, but that's the only thing I have on my head. I'm going to let the uh, wire hang down and then I'm going to run the wire from the battery up around to the back of my head and connect here. There'll be more than enough slack. If for some reason you need a different connection or you need more wire, I just wanted to point out that uh, they do provide that. Now, I want to answer one question real quick because it has come up before, and that is why not just put the battery somewhere on the strap of your, uh, of your backpack? And that actually works fairly well until you have to take your pack off and then it's extremely cumbersome and for me uh, out here in the heat like this i'm going to have to take hydration breaks uh, in search and rescue in general i'm taking my pack off a lot so that just simply uh, does not work so the things i'm going to be trying to evaluate tonight are overall how comfortable is this setup this is extremely light and the strap it's very flexible, very soft. We have some additional padding back here. So I'm going to be interested in how comfortable it is. Uh, how hot does it get? Tonight I'm going to be running probably 30 to 40 minutes on high. And then I'm going to switch to turbo and try to run that for maybe 5 to 10 minutes. So uh, I'll find out a lot about heat and that's about it for our, uh, our introduction, so I'm going to finish getting kitted out here and let the sun go down a bit more, and then once again we'll get out in the field and see what this light can really do. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started even though there's still some light out. So far the setup is working uh, extremely well. The headlamp went on without even a single strap adjustment I can feel the tiniest bit of pressure on my forehead the uh, only issue is that there's still some slack in the cord coming out of the battery now it would normally overlap uh, my left strap on my ruck and that's where I carry both my uh, Garmin inReach Explorer Plus and my hyper whistle and the hyper whistle is something that I use frequently uh, I also wear a very light vest, and I have uh, survival and other medical gear. Anything that I need frequent access to is in the pockets. And I was just able to tuck that excess uh, cable away inside the vest. So I'd say, so far, extremely comfortable, no issues. Uh, I want to stay out at least an hour, and uh, we'll see if it, if it all holds up. I'm in high mode right now, and I'm going to leave it in high for at least 35, maybe 40 minutes, and then I'll switch over to uh, turbo and see how well that does for 5 or 10 minutes sustained, and uh, then I'll come back and do a wrap-up. I see a ton of rabbits out of these preserves, but this is the first time I've ever run across a baby. Still in high, still going strong, still comfortable. It may be a little bit too bright, but if you look down at my watch and you see the diamond shape on the bezel at roughly the 7 after mark, that's when I started. So you can see I've actually been in high mode for in the ballpark of not quite 50 minutes. And uh, it's still cranking out. That tree in front of me is a good 20 yards away and of course we have some background light pollution from being inside a city so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually at the other side of the lake I'm going to walk around back to where I started I'm going to go ahead and kick it up into turbo 
There we go. And so far, comfort has been outstanding. Uh, other than just the slight pressure of the headlamp itself, I can barely even tell it's there. Uh, I've had one hydration break, took my pack off, back on, no issues. The only thing I've noticed is I do have to periodically uh, put my hand in and make sure that that uh, cable is comfortably tucked away inside my vest, otherwise it may interfere with getting to my hyper whistle. That's the only thing I've noticed uh, so far. In turbo now, in terms of heat, yeah, the, the headlamp itself is getting hot. If you put your finger up there on top where the heat's being dissipated, you might be able to hold it for four or five seconds. So I have a pretty high tolerance for heat and about five, six seconds is about all I could, all I could take. Um, but I don't feel anything on my forehead. I've got it in turbo right now and uh, it feels just like it did when it was uh, off. So let's walk around to the other side of the lake and uh, we'll see if I still feel the same way. Okay, there is uh, total mission time. We did this second turbo for well over uh, 10 minutes. And uh, turbo is still cranking it out. I, I find it very rare to have any lighting system that you can put in its turbo mode and at least to the unaided eye it looks the same as it did when you turned it on. Now heat, oh yeah, the headlamp is hot. Uh, finger test down to about two seconds. The battery pack itself absolutely zero heat. I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it a night because the only thing that turbo is getting me right now is a whole bunch more bugs. They're flying into my throat, into my eyes, even with my uh, safety glasses on. And you might say, well, you know, the medium and high modes are so good, you probably wouldn't have all that need to run turbo for an extended amount of time anyway. Well, I want you to hold that thought because tomorrow night we will be at the LBJ Grasslands outside of Decatur, and I've got a couple of interesting use cases to show you. So see you tomorrow night. And we are back for part three of our evaluation. Last night, I was at the Oak Point Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight, one of my favorite areas, the LBJ Grasslands. Now, in part one of this evaluation, I think I made it pretty clear that the uh, battery situation really precludes me in search and rescue for using this as either a primary or secondary headlamp. That does not mean that I cannot use it at all. And tonight I'm gonna to show you a couple of examples. Now you notice I removed the headlamp from the strap here. And if I get up real close, you can see that I can mount this unit any way that I can mount a GoPro. And that actually, since I do outdoor and action videography, this gives me an extremely large amount of variety because I have so many GoPro mounts. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. I've got this set up on my backpack. The battery is actually in a vertical pocket inside, and I'm running the cord out. Of course, the trick is you want to have the cord arranged so that if I have to rip the pack open, I've got plenty of room. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, uh, Jim, the heat must have gotten to you because that light is pointed in the wrong direction. And if I were using it the way you might consider using a traditional headlamp, you are absolutely right. But there is a methodology behind this apparent madness. And once the uh, sun goes down, it gets a bit darker. I'll come back and I'll show you exactly what that is. I spend a lot of time in my videos talking about the search process. Well, you find someone, search transitions into rescue. I can generally divide rescue into a couple of phases. The first is treatment and stabilization and then extraction. I'd have to say that unfortunately many times a person cannot be moved. 
They need to be extracted by a team of people that have both the right equipment and the right trauma training. That means wherever I find someone, this area, for example, this is camp. And I have to stay with this person until additional responders can arrive, which means I need to set up area lighting for what I'm currently calling camp. Most of the time, I'm not going to be in a position to set up a fire. Uh, if, if it works out that way, that's fine. But generally, that's unrealistic. I have to use other lighting. I've tried a number of things, including lanterns, uh, but the most effective means in terms of carry weight and the results I get is my number three headlamp. And I always carry three headlamps and a minimum of three flashlights. The number three is either for area lighting or giving to a person that I found who is mobile that just needs help and guidance getting back uh, to where they need to go. So what I'm doing here is I've got the uh, MOH, as I showed you, on my pack. And even here, low to the ground, this is not a very efficient setup. Uh, but it's great for just getting started. I put my pack down, I get whatever I need out of it, I immediately turn that light on, and I've got area lighting, and I don't have a headlamp on right now. I, I would also normally be using my headlamp on a very uh, low level of illumination. This is running on medium, and you can see, as, as I go out here, I've got very good illumination over a wide area. And if I have time after I've done initial treatment, I could actually take this light off the pack and move it up on a tree. It would be even more efficient. And in medium mode, I can run for hours and hours and uh, hours on end. I could also use this during a rest interval and give my primary headlamp, give that battery a rest. So there's just a couple ways that that particular setup could be useful in the uh, rescue phase of search and rescue, even in the search process during uh, rest intervals. Ah, but I'm not finished. I have one more crazy scheme that I'd like to test out here. Give me a few minutes to get set up and I'll be right back. One of the things I have to do uh, more frequently than I would imagine is uh, vehicle search. And usually what I'll do is I'll have a uh, narrow beam, high candela light, and I'll be flashing that out of the left side of my truck. And then, you know, I've got my headlamp, my uh, headlights on the truck. And so I've got kind of the front and left cover. What's missing is the right side. So what I'm showing you here is I have the MOH mounted on a suction cup rig on the top of the truck. I've got it on turbo right now. We know we can get really good runtime in turbo. And what this allows me to do is cover a very wide area out to the side of the truck. So if there's something, you know, 15, 20 yards out to my right side that is reflective, or maybe it's a, you know, a piece of clothing that was dropped accidentally or something, I've at least got a chance to see it. Now, I've got the battery rigged up. Right there. So, that's how this setup works. It gives me uh, another option that I really didn't have before in something that's, you know, very lightweight, uh, very easy to transport, particularly as a vehicle-mounted asset. So, uh, that's it for the LBJ Grasslands. I'm going to go ahead and close it up here. If you were one of the subscribers who requested this review, I hope it helped you out. If you are looking at this slide and making your own evaluation, I hope you got enough information to make uh, an informed decision. As always, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching the video.